please feel free to ask. That's what we're here for. So um, Natalie is going to lead, and we're just going to um, be. I'm going to be along for the ride, so I'm going to mute. So if you need, if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask them. Okay. Um, and for those who don't know me, my name is Natalie Dugood, and I am a trainer in the Albany area of New York. Um, and what we really wanted to focus on with Engage, because Engage 2.0, there are so many things about it, um, but we wanted to take things in smaller bites um, because we've had a lot of, lot of big bites going on um, and that can just be overwhelming. And it's kind of actually hard to work on stuff when you have like a list of 10 things you need to work on on top of everything else that you guys are doing. So we're focused on little bites. So we're going to just go over this new dashboard um, and how it looks like and then move to filtering people. So as you can see on my screen, this is what the new dashboard looks like. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each section. Um, but first, I just want to point out that there is a menu to the right hand side. And when I you know, go over them, it gives me the, the move arrows. Anytime there's arrows like this, it usually means something is movable. Um, and so really the design of this is to make it, you know, what the order that works for you. Um, so I'm just going to arrange mine to look as similar to the old dashboard for engage as possible. So I grab my sales flow right here and I put that at the very top because that was the main feature of the old dashboard where we can see who's in our marketing, who's in our prospects, who's in our actives or pendings. Um, and then I grabbed the calendar here and I put that underneath for those who use their calendar a lot and they miss that feature. You can still have it so that it's showing pretty predominantly and then I can also take my goals completion and then put it underneath um, so that we're still having the main compo components of that old dashboard right at the top. Um, and then if you choose not to care about any of the other things, you know, you don't have to keep scrolling down. So definitely I'm going to talk about each of them and then I would arrange them in the order that you think is helpful um, for you. So again, the sales flow is at the top and that's just going to tell you where your people are um, and how many people you have in each of these um, marketing plans. Um, so right now, you know, I have my 11 in prospects who I started, I started to swirl and then I don't have any actives right now, but I do have a pending. So it's kind of just a snapshot of, you know, your business, your people and possibly your pipeline. Um, with that. This next one is your calendar. So kind of what, you know, to do to do for today, as well as, you know, some of those tasks um, for your clients. Um, right here, I can click on it. And it's going to give me a little bit more description. For instance, who the transaction, you know, this task is for, which I do not have her last name in there right now. She is just a, um, but you know, the description that I should schedule a meet and greet with her and I can schedule that me meeting. I can mark it as done. So it's going to take me right where I need to go um, from right off this, this homepage. Then our goals completion. So I do not have any, any money, but you can make this a percentage or you can make it actually the dollar signs right here, just depending on what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, they, they basically made this option for if you're using this, you know, say at the office and there's people walking around and maybe you don't want them um, to know the specifics of what you're doing, um, they'll take this off or on as you, as you want. Then again, if I click this view button right up here, it's going to take me right into my goal section again. So there's these tabs all along the top that can get me where I need to go, but also just right from this dashboard, we can go specifically into, you know, my closed transactions to see my goals. Um, and then on that active and pending button. So 
for those of you who have transactions, sometimes I'll hear people say that I can't see. Um, see, you do have to click on each of these little windows. Thanks, Nick. Mm -hmm. All right. Scrolling down. Okay, so the to-do list, um, I really like that they added this in. So basically, if I click under transaction tasks, it's again, um, semi almost, it's similar to the calendar where it's gonna show you those tasks, tasks that need to be done. Um, but um, it's also a little bit more, it's not just focused on one day. Um, so basically all the tasks that you have, you know, that you need to be doing or should be doing um, are going to show up under here under the transaction tasks. So you can see I haven't really touched these clients in a while because I just set them up here for training purposes. Um, so I can mark that complete just by, uh, you know, clicking over this button right here as I'm scrolling down or I could choose to edit it over here and maybe push the date out farther. If I know, you know, say it was about an inspection and I know that it got pushed back a week or two because of craziness, I can just do that right from here or I can completely trash a task if it's something I'm not planning on doing um, with a particular client. And so this is, this is really helpful um, and very customizable um, for what you want. And it's driven by, again, your task manager, which if we go up to engage, engage settings, that's where you can edit your three main plans, your market plan, your buyer plan, and your seller plan, which we will go over in another class because that's a whole class in and of itself. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that's where this feeds from. Then if we're back up to my tasks, these are tasks that you can set up for yourself. So it's kind of, you know, your own personal post-it note um, or checklist that you might have of upcoming things. Oops. Um, so you just simply click add a task. On here, it will show you, you can sort by as well order created or by the date that the task is required. Um, but I can just click right here, add task, and I would name it something. So I engage me to do this. And then I would click on this little edit task button just to kind of open up more details. Um, that's really the best way to do it. I tried enter and stuff and you just have to click that little pencil to the right hand side. Can you um, point out the add to calendar? Yep. So as we're going down, you can put in more details. So if you know you have a, a generic one of, you know, call this person or something, you could then write in there, you know, ask about their son's wedding or something. Any, any specific detail that you have. You can give yourself a due date right here of when you want this completed by, you know, maybe by Friday. It's a, just got to do it sometime this week. Um, and you can actually associate a task with someone. This is more so for teams um, that might want to assign a task to someone um, else. And then you're going to click add to calendar down here and give it a second to populate. There we go, check mark. And then that's gonna feed to your Outlook calendar. And then I would simply just do, there's no save button. Um, I would just do the arrow back and it's gonna show up right here. So it can be anything from pick up milk on the way home to something that's related to the business. It can be anything, you know, don't forget the dog groomers at 2 p.m., whatever it is. Yep. So that is what we have on the to-do list. Um, I like this one a lot. I'm probably gonna start using it because um, I have a lot of sticky notes um, and little checklists everywhere and I like putting them on my calendar. Stay in flow. So this is at a, the top of a lot of people's uh, dashboard list basically um, because it just helps you 
to remember to reach out to five people every day because um, just the power of prospecting and just staying in front of your clients as um, a realtor. And so this one is huge. This was one of the main original main purposes of Engage. It's just all of the research that they did showing that, you know, people love the realtor they worked with, you know, 10 out of 10 would work with that same realtor again. And then one year later, they end up going with someone else or something because they've forgotten their realtor's name or who their realtor was. Um, and so engage one of the main purposes is just helping people um, to never forget who you are and to make sure that um, your past clients are going to use you again, that you're top of mind so that they're you know, going to refer you to people um, and just making you look like a rock star. Yeah, that's 85% of people forget their realtor's name. It's a huge number. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, most a lot of your business is going to come from people already in your COI um, because they already know you, they already like you, they already trust you, um, and you you want to get those referrals too. Um, so basically, it will give you five people a day here, and it's going to appear. You do have the options if someone pops up and you're like, mm, you know, I don't need to reach out to them for some reason, I don't know why. Um, you could remove them from the stay and flow or you can remove them from engage altogether if you have um, like a duplicate or, or something where you just don't want them in your engage. You can do that right from here as well, just so you know that that option is there. And then also your reach out options. So right now my email, it's gonna give me this guy's email where I can just immediately write, or not a guy, um, write them an email here. Um, I can put a subject, I can write my little note, and then this is what basically my signature will look like um, for them. And I can just send that out right from here. Um, I also have the option to set them up for neighborhood news if they are not already. Um, most people use Engage, um, use neighborhood news and love it. Clients love it because it's, you know, accurate and just good information for them to have once a month of what is going on in their zip code um, and to see the trends of things. And again, you look like a rock star and you have all the information for to answer the questions that they might have. Um, I then, you can choose to skip people if, you know, maybe you actually, I actually called Monica last week about something. Um, I could skip her for now, or I could just mark her as done. I can even write a little note about it, you know, uh, or an email. I could say something specific if I, again, like, uh, her son, son's wedding went well, you know, so whatever I wanted to do, and I can just click log and complete, which will now show up in her activity section. And she'll have that nice little check mark there. Um, and that that is all set. Here. That can also be helpful to you as a realtor. If you're having a problem with a client, they're not responding to you, they're not getting back to you. The description can be sent an email, phone called, texted, no response um, about the septic situation or this or that or the other thing. That can be um, a paper trail for you that can help protect you later on. So it's a great way to use this tool to help uh, make sure everybody knows where you are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sometimes writing that little one or two sentence note will really uh, save you in the long run. There's also a gear up here. So you can kind of control a little bit about, you know, how long someone has been out of touch before they are uh, resurfaced. So you have, you know, maybe one to two to three months of when you want people to be coming up again and to be reaching out to them also depends on how many people are in your COI. If you have, um, you know, so many 300 people, it's gonna take a while to cycle through them five a day. 
Um, and then also just which people surface to you. Um, you can just see the, you know, pending active prospects. You have past sellers, past buyers. Those I think are huge to make sure you're staying in touch with, as well as leads, new or uncategorized. Um, this is the default setting right here. It's not going to default to personal or collaborator um, because most likely, you know, if you have your attorneys in here that you're working with, you're going to be uh, talking to them often without um, needed prompts. So um, when you're looking at these 30, 60, 90 days, if you're doing 90 days, you're only touching people four times a year and that's not enough. So if you're looking at a marketing campaign to stay top of mind, it really should be in that 30 day range. Um, so you need to have something of content to be, and we have more of that now to contact them with. But if you're thinking every 90 days is okay, it's not gonna grow your business. You're gonna miss opportunity. Um, it really needs to be in that 30 day range. And so this is also something I've reached out to Moxie about because um, I was not 100% sure, um, but I think with the stay in the flow, you can, um, you know, sign them up for neighborhood news right there. But I don't think the neighborhood news or the campaigns, um, you know, count as reaching out to someone in regards to this stay in, stay in the flow activity. I think this is a specific, um, you know, make, make sure that you're actually, you know, sending a Facebook message or like you did something personal and not just one of these um, everyday campaigns and stuff that we we have a lot of the contact that uh, Maggie was talking about. Um, because yes, four times a year is, you know, not enough for them to be giving you out for referrals all the time um, and staying top of mind. Yeah, so but, stay in the flow here um, where Natalie is showing you is more like either um, Howard Hanna's daily sevens, contacting a certain number of people every day, either uh, by phone, by email, or um, sending them a handwritten note, or like uh, Ninja's five a day. Um, so whatever program you ascribe to, these are the these are those ones that elevate your presence in front of your clients and make them more likely to respond to you because you're responding to them in a more personal way. Yep, it's, it's definitely a more meant for a more personal point of contact um, rather than just, you know, for, for those, the Happy Labor Day postcard that went out. It's great because, you know, you're keeping them in your sphere. They know your name. They know you're a realtor. They, you know, just like, oh, they, this person sent me, you know, a, a Christmas card or, or something. Um, but so those are all great as well. But this is also just a little bit of a personal touch that you can have with them to catch up. Um, and see what's, you know, see what is going on in, in their head. And especially, again, we've been saying this so much this year, um, but now more than ever, people like to just know someone's checking in. Um, and so it, it's a great way to just have a, a quick little, you know, five minute phone call or something with, with someone. So the next one is your activity feed. So you can see right now it's telling me um, that you know these neighborhood news were sent out and that this one person changed their zip code to be a different zip code, um, which is a good alert to have um, because that's a great reason to reach out just to kind of see you know why why they're maybe checking out a different zip code or whatnot or if maybe they they want you to set up a house search for them or something. Um, again, the gear to the right gears always mean edit. And you do have the time frame for display activities. You know, if you're really active on here, then maybe you just want it to be that past week because it's too much to go through if it's a whole past month. And then you also have these categories of activities to show. Um, so the email activities are what we saw with neighborhood news. Um, I am currently also asking Moxie about these website and automated and presentation activities. I believe the automated would have to do with campaigns, I think, but I did set up a new presentation and it did not show. 
So it could be because I'm a trainer and so my things are a little bit on the funky side with how they all connect, but I am curious about the website activity and what exactly that means. Um, so I will fill you guys in when I hear back from them, um, unless Maggie knows. Um, I'm not as sure about the website activities, but presentation activities through Howard Hanna presentations, you can use your e-contacts groups and send out emails using the build a page. Um, and you can have video content, you can have photos, you can have like a newsletter, you can do a combination of all of those. Um, so that's a whole nother class by itself. Um, but that's, it, it's one of my new favorite things I discovered like two or three months ago um, since COVID. And um, it's, it's like, it's so cool and we're not utilizing it. Um, actually, I've used Susan Hughes, who's on the call. I used a little video she made to show people how, how well we could do this in a newsletter because it was a great little one minute shot. Um, so these are, so when you find out about the website, let me know. But the presentations, there's, we need to do that class again because um, okay. it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool stuff. So then if you send out in a newsletter or something through, um, you know, presentations, then you'll get that activity notice as well. And so it's just easy to kind of see things in a snapshot. Uh, hold on, question. Okay, Maggie's answering. Um, and so, yeah, so I will let you know about when the website activities. I ask them if it's just going to pop up that someone has looked at your website or, you know, if they signed up for neighborhood news on your website. Um, I'm hoping all that stuff will show up here. Um, but right now I do not have a website, so nothing would be showing up. And then at the very bottom, you'll have um, your listings where you can see your active and pending and you can see your sold. Um, just in a great snapshot. Um, and this is also great for your listing announcements and what not to go out. Um, again, if we click view, it looks like we, I'll address neighborhood news in just a second to answer some questions um, in case for those who are not looking at the chat. But it's gonna take you here where you're gonna see your active and your pendings, which I do not have. Um, but they would show up here as well. So again, off of just your homepage on your dashboard, you have all these things that um, you can go to directly, like your direct listing and whatnot in um, Moxie. So yeah, just a quick question about neighborhood news, just for those who are not reading the chat. Um, how often does neighborhood news go out? Um, that is once a month. Um, and then is, you know, is there a way to schedule neighborhood news to go out to your entire sphere or does it only go out on that day when you sign them up? Um, Maggie said it goes out on the day you set them up. So if you set people up for, you know, today, the 8th, then, um, October 8th would be the next one that is going out. You can create through Real Scout a mock neighborhood news um, for any neighborhood. Um, it's not, it doesn't have all of the features, but you can do that with active pending and sold for someone if you're looking to do that. Yep. Um, and again, neighborhood news did also get updated so that it's, you have that zip code option, but you also can create a sphere um, as well um, to send it out. So that's also another update. So any questions about this dashboard or what, you know, each of these do um, before we move on just kind of to filtering people? All right. Oh. If we send out a newsletter, is there a way to have it recorded all at once? Um, what recorded, just that it went out or? Yeah, Nat, if I do a newsletter, you know, uh, through Howard Hanna Marketing and I do a newsletter and it goes out, whatever it is, quarterly or whatever, is there a way that that will get recorded on here without me having to go into every one or? Hmm, that is a good question. I know through through campaigns, which again is, is a different class, um, they do have their they moved the Howard Hanna newsletter over to that now. Um, 
Neighborhood News is there too, Natalie. Yeah, and neighborhood. So all those, but if you're actually creating your own um, newsletter that's going out, I don't. You can do a newsletter through Howard Hanna presentations and you can use your engage contacts to send it. So they're linked. Um, so that's where that build a page is, could be a great newsletter and you can do that using your engage contacts, but using Howard Hanna presentations to create it. Yeah, which, which would make it definitely more interactive. Um, if you're just having like marketing do one and do a PDF, um, you still can upload that into Hannah presentations and send it out that way um, to a group. If you made a group that you know is my my personal newsletter group, um, so so either of those ways I think would would be the best way to do it. Depending how tons of stuff we can do. Yeah. So and again, we can talk through find a way that works for you, um, and then and then you kind of have your pattern to follow in the future. All right, um, so we can move on to filtering people, which again, um, we didn't wanna go over too much in this class, just kind of some of the new changes that have been coming to engage. Um, and so really, if we go to people and my people, uh, we're just going to talk kind of through the different filter options. So you can just search for someone, of course, by name, always. Um, but I also can search by the sales flow. And this is grayed out because there's no one in there. Um, I can search by buyers or sellers or past buyers and sellers. Um, also non-clients, you know, collaborators or personal contacts if you have them in there. And then there's even this action needed where either there's a new person that has joined your sphere, um, there's an uncategorized person, so they haven't been put in like a marketing plan. And then, you know, missing information, you know, phone number, email, home address, name. So if maybe you're, you know, wanting to go through and clean up your contacts or get more accurate information or you know, you want more email addresses because that's how a lot of our automated stuff works. Um, you can click on that and filter through that. Then over to the side is where we have our groups. So again, especially with campaigns, I would definitely encourage you guys to think through your groups um, and how you want to group people up. And they're going to show up over here. Um, and then if they're grayed out again. It just means nobody's in that group. Um, just make sure with groups, um, if you're creating the groups, make sure you're putting people, you're not putting people in more than one group, unless you have a group like my um, annual calendar group, in which that's the only people, you're not hitting multiple groups because you don't want to ever send people the same thing from different groups. So I'm sending John um, three identical emails because I have them in three groups where my calendar group would be separate. So make sure that you're keeping them in the group you most strongly identify them with. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so be careful with that. Um, and groups can really help you um, to identify who you're marketing to and why you're marketing. You may market differently to them. So they can be very helpful to your careers. Definitely. Um, and so then we have the campaigns where, so again, you know, any of the campaigns that you've downloaded um, and are running, you know, are going to show up here. I have a holiday campaign. I have a seller warm prospects and I, and then of course we have the neighborhood news and listing announcements. So first you could filter by subscribed and then we can also filter by not subscribed. Um, and then you would check mark the ones that you want. So maybe if you're going through and you know, you're like, I think all of my people are subscribed to neighborhood news, but I'm not sure. You know, you would come here and click not subscribed and then you would click neighborhood news and then you could see everyone that's not subscribed um, and either subscribe them or um, 
remember why they are not subscribed. And then uh, the last one is just lead sources, which should say by Scott. Hold on. So your lead sources should say Spacio, which is um, open close. It should say lead tracks, leads now. Um, it may have realtor.com um, and real scout and buy side. Yep. Um, and again, it's only going to show up the ones that you have in here to choose from. Um, but you can sort from that as well, um, just to see kind of where your leads are going. Um, the best way to put them in. And so then, of course, when you click the one you want, you would just click apply. And they're gonna so I'll, I can do, you know, subscribed. And they're gonna show up, you know, right here for me. So that's really kind of the main aspect. You can select all people here. And you can again add them to a group, add them to a campaign, add them to neighborhood news. Um, or mark them as a past seller buyer. You can always export people. Um, so if you are, you know, doing a Christmas card and you want to do personal ones, um, not electronic, you have your group of Christmas card people, um, you know, you can always export them here. And then there is this edit groups button where I can make my groups over here. I can delete any of the ones I don't want and I can create a new one over here. And your groups do go over to your, your Outlook email as well if you use, um, you know, uh, the Hannah Mail Outlook app. So that's kind of where my biweekly and daily duties come from um, are, are those group settings that I have where you can add any more here. And that's basically just kind of filtering your contacts here. So any, any questions on this? So using the filters is going to help you separate it by the, you know, the, the listing announcements, the neighborhood news, all of your groups and all of those things. And if this is a wonderful opportunity, the best thing about engage and the best way to use engage is not to just keep importing and exporting names around and sending out automated emails, the best thing that you can do, the most productive thing that you can do to build your career is to pick up the phone and to call people and to have a conversation with them, which is why we're asking five or seven a day. Um, you don't want to call 50 people in a day. Um, it's overwhelming. You don't remember anything. Um, you begin to sound very canned if you're doing 50 a day. Five or six phone, seven phone calls a day you're going to have the opportunity to get good information, find out about them, make notes about what's going on so that the next time you call them, you can say, hey, last time we spoke, this was going on. How are things today? So um, this is the best way to build your relationship business. And we know a yeah, relationship business is the strongest, longest lasting business and you have the higher, highest referral rate. How many of you feel like you already have a good relationship business? If you already have one, how would you like to have twice as much? <laughs> you know, if that's what you're after, this is how to do it. And this is what Engage does for you. This is how you, um, yeah, uh, Chris, can we up? Yes, you can absolutely upload. I don't recommend it. I recommend putting them in one at a time and no one ever likes that answer. Um, why do I do that? Because when you pull, pull them all in from someplace else, and you're already going to have enough people that are being pulled from other places, you don't have good or complete information, you wind up filtering them anyway, and having to go through and call them. I recommend put them in one at a time and as you're putting them in, making phone calls to them if you can or emailing them or texting them if that's all you've got so that you can start a conversation to get accurate information. And sometimes the best thing to do is say, hey, my information is updated or I wanted to make sure you had all of my information. Let's share our information. Here's my new phone number. Here's my email address, um, whatever. Um, I'm checking in on people during COVID, see how you're doing. Are you are the kids back at school? Whatever it is. Um, are you working from home? Are you working? Are you doing a half and half? How are, how's that going? One at a time is the way to build your engage 
database. Every person in your center of influence is, that they say is worth $1,000. So what, build, what size business do you want to have? That's how many people you need to have in your database. Um, yeah, so, so on that point, again, that's why filters are important um, because you can filter by, you know, if you, if you do upload a, a huge crowd of people in, they are all going to be uncategorized. So you can go in here and then just work through them, you know, a couple a day. You can look for missing information here as well. Um, and to, to add them into that flow. So it is really important to, to do it in bite sizes or bite size amounts um, where you can just, you know, contact, you know, five people a day, get updated information. But I will show you where you can upload um, from Excel. So there is a gear up here to the top right and it says import Outlook CSV. So again, um, Gmail has an option where when you export your contacts, they can be um, an Outlook CSV. You need to change that or, you know, choose that. If you click on Help Center, it will give you the CSV template to copy and paste into. Um, and then also, if you're on the dashboard and you just search for Outlook CSV, again, give it a second. Um, it's going to be this top option here and you would download it. And basically you copy and paste into the required fields. And then you would just, you have to be under my people. And then you go to the the gear up to the top right, and it will give you this import Outlook CSV option. You select file, um, and then they would get imported in um, that way. And so, yeah, so, so if you choose to do that, I just would, you know, make sure that, you know, the information is, is, is updated with them um, because it's not, you can't merge people. So if you, you upload a bunch of people and there's a duplicate, um, you can't merge the two, the two duplicates. You just kind of have to pick which one is the right one or has the most information. And then, you know, either write it down on a, in an email or something or, and paste it in there. Does everybody know what Natalie means when she's um, saying uncategorized? Does anybody not know? Everybody knows? Okay, just wanna make sure. Yep. They're not in one of the plans. And again, um, just a, another precaution with uploading a, a whole Excel in is that you definitely want to make sure that your plans are are updated before you start, you know, going through your uncategorized people and putting them all on plans, which again, that's another class. Um, right now, I would just focus on looking at the dashboard and seeing what you might use, what could help your business, and just, you know, focus on that one thing that you're doing. If it's just coming in here and looking at your calendar every day, or, um, you know, it could be that, you know, checking out your listings and making sure you're sending listing announcements, just focus kind of on one of those things a day. Um, and, you know, you can move this to the top if you wanted for that. If that's what you want to be focusing on now. Um, and then just kind of going through your people and the really the missing information here, making sure that that gets updated um, and, you know, maybe putting them in some groups is what I would work on currently um, from this class. And then in our future classes, we will be talking about, you know, the different plans, how to edit those and get those up to speed. Um, and then down the road, we will be taking, you know, campaigns in uh, more bite-sized pieces because campaigns are huge and I think great. A lot of marketing has put out a lot of great material with them, um, but it is a lot. So again, we're just trying to take this little by little neighborhood news, you know, sign people up for that um, and just get comfortable with this and just um, get more organized because organization is great and again, staying top of mind 
having a good relationship with, with your clients and getting those referrals is really uh, what we want. Natalie, can you just show them where the resource center is so when we're not around, they can go get some more information? While she's going there, um, we have watch Wednesday webinars this month are about Engage, so, and they're broken up into smaller bite-sized pieces as well, slightly different classes than Natalie and I are offering. Yep, so off the Engage 2.0 Resource Center is right here. Um, and they have a couple videos, some tutorials um, about campaigns and whatnot. And then again, always, if you just type in engage up here, you search for it, um, loads of information. You have the engage CRM resources right here, engage 2.0, documents, help got you, like you, there's, there's so much stuff um, if you have questions. And of course, we are always here to save you five minutes if we can. And then I just want to also show, so for those who may have missed the Wednesday webinar last week. It, Howard Hanna Education and Training has a YouTube channel that we've been trying to keep up to date. And we actually made an engage playlist right here um, where it's just little things, you know, add the Howard Hanna newsletter to your engage campaign three times apparently. So we're going to go in and get rid of that. Um, but Engage for Beginners was a class, Engage Subscriptions was a class, Task List and Task Flow where it's just, again, trying to keep them 30 minutes. And then usually there's about 10 to 15 minutes of questions at the end. And in the Resource Center under Training, on the far right, there's um, a tab that says Training and Tutorials. There's 67 videos in there. The longest one is six minutes. Um, <clears throat> so it's really small little bites. Uh, that's how I learned how to use Engage. So I know they work. Um, sorry, that was, were you in Engage, Maggie? Yeah, under the Resource Center. Oh, Resource Center, that's not where I went. Sorry. No, that's mm -hmm. fine, I just, mm -hmm. I just clicked. Resource Center, here we go. Yeah, so under Training and Tutorials at the bottom, and Engage Training and Tutorials, the top. There you go, click on that. and engage videos. There's 67 videos. If you click on that little blue box, it takes you to them. Um, they're categorized. So if you still feel like you're brand new, getting started is the best place to start. Um, it's how you use engage and why. Some of these, when I'm glancing through now, I'm looking for the new dashboard instead of the old dashboard because um, it's, it's going to be a little less confusing to you. They're trying to update those, um, but there's a lot of new, there's a lot of basic tools here I mean, very quick, um, three minutes, 22 seconds. <laughs> They're very quick little things on how to use Engage better and more effectively. Um, Honestly, this is how I learned how to use Engage. So it's it's very helpful. Yep. So yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah. So so again, um, really, Engage is a such a powerful tool. Um, just really to help with organization and to really just build your relationship business. Um, it just really needs to be taken in, in bite-sized pieces um, to just kind of start using it, start just getting in the habits with it, start getting comfortable with it. Um, so yeah, so, so never be overwhelmed, even if you're just using one aspect of this tool. Like, I mean, honestly, even if you're just sending out neighborhood news, that's great information. You're the source of that information. And that's once a month hitting you know, all the people in your COI with, with information that they're interested in and that they should know about their neighborhoods. So even just if you're just using Engage in one aspect, um, it's still a really powerful tool. So don't, don't worry about becoming an expert all at once. And if you are someone who wants to become an expert all at once, there's so much help and always, you know, give it, shoot us a call or send us an email um, with any questions you have, as well as Moxie support, button down here. 
um, they're, they're also happy to help you as well. Any questions on the dashboard or the filtering? I'm always surprised when I see no's. <laughs> It's just, I'm so thorough in my- You team. are, you're so good, Natalie. That's why we love you. Um, you know, that's what we're here for is to answer questions. So if you have questions, it's the time to ask them. Okay. All right, and then our next, what's our next class, Maggie? 22nd and it's on, oh gosh, what's the topic? Campaigns and something. Um, well, campaigns in and of itself will be. Yeah, so we'll be doing, we'll be working on campaigns. It's on the Go Hannah calendar. Um, if you guys don't know this, can you just show your home dashboard, please? Uh, yeah, the, that one. So if you go, to, this calendar in the middle is the education and training calendar. You can search by area. So we can go to New York. Um, and yeah, there it is, campaigns, um, set up and manage campaigns. Uh, so if you click on that, you'll see I took the time to put in a description for you and the Zoom link. So any classes that I set up are gonna have all of that in on the, on the calendar and in the description. All you have to do is click on it and then you can come right into the Zoom meeting. Um, so everything you need is right there. And I get questions, I don't know where the Zoom link is, I don't know how to get in, because sometimes people register late. You can go right to the calendar and just get right in. So um, that's there for you to make life easier. <laughs> all right, so sounds good. Thank you all for coming. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks, Gwen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Bye. Well done, Miss Natalie. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, if you just want to send me the video, I can upload.